Hello everyone, this is your Monday morning devotional. In Matthew chapter 6 verses 31 to 33, Jesus said the following, Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. This passage is the summary of a long section in which Jesus compares the experience of being in the kingdom of God under the grace of God to living under the weight of the law and constantly under the judgment of God. Seeking the kingdom was explained in terms that seemed even more demanding than the law. For example, the law said, do not murder, but in the kingdom, one must not even hate his brother or call him a fool. The law said, do not commit adultery, but the kingdom demands that we do not even think about adultery. The law said, be fair and just, but the kingdom requires us to love enemies ignore insults, even give to those who are undeserving. The law permits and governs wealth, but the kingdom only recognizes heavenly treasure. It would seem that to seek after the kingdom is a heavier burden than to keep the law. After all, who can avoid hatred or always have a pure mind? And who among us is able to have the faith to live for the next world and deny the one in which we live? It would seem that way, except for one important difference. That is the difference between the words keep and seek. To keep means to obey, to maintain, not to make mistakes or omissions. To be saved, accepted by God on the basis of law, one had to keep the entire law, James chapter 2, verse 10. To please God by keeping means that unless the entire law is kept, there is no pleasing him. It's all or nothing. To seek, on the other hand, means to search for, to desire, to endeavor, to plan, and try for. In the passages on the kingdom, Jesus describes exactly what it is that we're trying for. A love that includes those that are the most far away, our enemies. A heart that will not entertain an action that is ungodly or impure an attitude that depends totally on God for defense, for provision, and for encouragement, a hope that is fixed on heaven through Christ and not dependent on any earthly thing for heavenly joy. These are the goals of those who are in the kingdom, and for those who seek these goals, Jesus makes certain promises. Number one, if you seek the kingdom, you do not have to keep the law. That means freedom for those who are under the curse of having no margin for mistakes. When you seek, you're allowed a margin for failure. He didn't say, keep the kingdom. He said, seek the kingdom. The very fact that you had to look for it, try for it, attempt it, means that he is prepared to forgive you when you do not find it instantly. So those who are honestly seeking the kingdom can say that they are seekers, even if they have not forgiven all their enemies, and sometimes they get discouraged because that is what seeking is all about. It is about looking for something that they have not yet completely found. Secondly, if you seek the kingdom, you will eventually find it. Those who try to please God and themselves by keeping the law can be sure of one thing, they will never succeed. Paul tells us this in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. But the promise to those who are seeking is that one day they will find the lost coin, they will find the lost sheep, the pearl of great price, they will find the kingdom of God. You will find it in part now, and then when Jesus comes, you will find it completely. When Jesus returns, he will not be looking for the ones who kept the law, because there won't be any of those to be found. When he comes, he will allow himself to be found by those who have been searching for him all their lives, searching for him through loving action, through refined hearts, through trusting obedience, through a wealth of good deeds. So, what are you searching for? Wealth? A better and more comfortable position in this world? 
safety for you and your family, or will you make your first priority the seeking of God's kingdom in your life? If you've not begun the search, the first step is a confession of faith and repentance, along with the baptism in Christ, to set you on the road into the kingdom. And for those who have lost their way, a request for forgiveness is the way back to being a seeker. For the believers, just a reminder not to be discouraged. Whatever you seek in Christ not found yet, you will clearly see and have when he comes. My prayer is that you will focus on seeking the kingdom this week. I'm Mike Mazzalongo for BibleTalk.tv. Discussion questions number one. What form does seeking the kingdom take in your life? Number two, describe an attitude, failure, or weakness you've left behind since you began seeking the kingdom. Number three, what is one way you help others seek the kingdom?